Hi, I'm Mohamed Reza Beruzi. We are proud of ourselves that you watch our videos and we can make a small contribution towards your knowledge improvements. These videos that we have uploaded on our website or on our YouTube channel consist of notes and real case examples from our last projects. Those projects were performed by a team of professionals and experts. Therefore, by watching these videos, you can gain tremendous amount of knowledge and experience by which you can design your process units, your plants with higher safety. You are our only a sponsor. So, if you enjoy the video, at the end, hit the like and subscribe so that you can get informed about our latest videos. In these episodes, as I promised, which is the following episodes of the first episodes about the general guidelines toward the design of rupture disks, uh, as specific examples from API Annex A is described, and we are going to see how in and we are going to see how this uh, rupture disk is going to be sized for the real case for a real case problem. Here. Uh, if you go to the Annex E of uh, API 520 Part 1, here if you have the capacity evaluation of rupture disk and piping system, vapor flow and constant pipe diameter. Here is the example problem. This is a very good example and I really wanted to share it with you and how to better understand uh, the sizing procedure for uh, rupture disk using the example provided by the API. Figure 1 shows the arrangement of the vessel and rupture disk piping system for the example problem. Here is the our examples. Here there is a vessels and of course uh, there is a rupture disk here, the burst pressure is 100 psi and of course uh, the piping diameter is 3 inch with the schedule of 40 and the length between the this flange to this uh, rupture disc is 3 feet and from the uh, rupture disc to the uh, expanse to the header or atmosphere is 12 inches is 12 uh, feet so the total uh, distance is about 15 uh, feet you know, to be honest, we have the same, we have the same uh, structures uh, in our plants, and that was the reason uh, I chose these examples. And of course, uh, instead of just uh, these vessels, this rupture disc is installed uh, for a heat exchanger, and of course, uh, on the shell side, and uh, due, uh, on the sh and uh, for the shell side, the liquid, the fluid is uh, cooling water, and the, and of course the uh, the uh, internal diameter of the piping is about three inches, like here, and the distance is exactly fifteen feet from this point to this point. And by the way the burst pressure is exactly this one so it is not just a api example it is a, a practical example for my plant the same uh, values the same uh, burst pressure with the same uh, in fact uh, internal diameter for uh, you know piping system So here, the first step, we determine required information. Maximum allowable working pressure is 100 PSIG. And so the relieving pressure with the 10% accumulations is 124.7 uh, PSI absolute. And the, the relieving temperature is, uh, the relieving temperature is, we have to convert the temperature in Fahrenheit to 
rank height. The relieving compressibility is 1, the molecular weight is 20, and the back pressure is the atmospheric pressure, which is 40.5, uh, 40.7 uh, 40 psi absolute. In second step, we determine overall piping resistance factor. So here, at first, we create a table like here. We have to calculate the total system co-value. And of course, uh, we divide it into different sections to a sharp edge of entrance, rub the co-value for rupture disk, the co-value uh, for uh, the 50, uh, the 50 uh, distance between rupture disk and the outlet point, sudden expansion, and we, ca and we sum all of this. So here, we consider a co-factor for here, for uh, for here, for uh, this height, for, for for this distance, and for the rupture this itself, and for the sudden expansion. So for the sharp edge entrance, the co-value based on crane is 0.5. The rupture disc is typically 1.5 for this one we have to base in the uh, mechanical fluids we had this value we had these equations for uh, calculation of core value uh, the f factor is this value we know the length is 15 feet uh, 15 feet and the diameter is 3 inches and if we convert it if we divide it by 12 inches uh, it can be converted to this in order to have it in feet unit. So, core factor is multiplied by this value and this value and divided by this value. I'm gonna have the calculator ready and co calculate core factor for this ones. Multiply by this value, then divided by this value. So you see it becomes 1.04 here. So sudden expansion exit loss based on the API 5 to table 10, it is 1 and the total system call factor because it becomes 4.04. So here we determine the overall piping resistance factor from the table which became 4.4. Uh, 4.04. In third step, we determine Y sonic and DP sonic to uh, upper stream pressure based on total system call. In order to calculate this ones, we have a chart on the crane uh, documents, or we can use the following uh, curve, the following equations. I'm going to use the following equations because it is more, you know, uh, more uh, conservative, more uh, robust, and more uh, precise. If CA is between, uh, as an alternative to the chart method, care fit equation for obtaining voice sonic, and these have been provided as equation through equation this one. For a DP sonic to uh, upstream pressure, if the car, uh, the car for a system is between 1.2 to 10, it should be this equation should be used. If the car is between 10 to 100, this equation should be used. For our system, the car value is 4. So, and it is between this one, and therefore, this equation is used. And for voice sonic, since the core factor here is between 1.2 to 20, this equation is used instead of these equations. So based on these core factors, uh, if you use these equations, this value is going to be achieved. And if you use these equations, this value for voice sonic is going to be achieved. In fourth step, we compare DP sonic 
to upstream pressure to the dp actual to upstream pressure now calculate the dp actual here in order to calculate the dp actual we have to uh, subtract the upstream the downstream pressure from the relieving pressure the relieving pressure as we calculated became this value and the upstream pressure uh, is uh, downstream pressure is this value which is the atmospheric pressure divided by the relieving pressure we reach this value it's for this ratio now we can compare this value with the sonic value and for the sonic value it becomes 0.69 so null, uh, this dp sonic is less than the dp actual therefore the flow will be sonic and critical and since these are sonic and critical we skip to the step six but if you're for your applications if it is uh, the dp sonic is more than dp actual and it becomes subsonic you have to go through a step five but for this case since it is so it is sonic we can proceed to the next uh, the, uh, we can skip the uh, uh, step six we calculate capacity based on crane which is based uh, which is for this equation as you can see we need the voice sonic the diameter the dp sonic the co value and v1 we have all of this calculated in previous steps and we go through step 7 and calculate the in fact capacity here we know that the y is equals to y sonic and it is 0.65 the diameter is the pipe id which is uh, about uh, 3 inches the dp of course you have to, in order to calculate dp sonic you have to multiply this ratio by the upstream pressure uh, upstream pressure let me show you how it works upstream pressure uh, the relieving pressure p1 is this value and of course we know that the dp uh, this ratio is this value so it becomes 86 about uh, this value and of course if i psi then I have the overall resistance 4.04 and of course uh, we can calculate the vapor specific volume which is then we can substitute all of this information here and calculate the weight for these applications in sub 8 Curve fit method values are, uh, you know, used, and of course, you can see here the same, uh, about the same uh, results are achieved or accomplished. In uh, step seven, chart method values were used, but in uh, step six, as a comparison, the uh, curve fit methods were used, and of course, the results are uh, the same. Now let's review what we have done so far. We said that there is a system here and of course there is a vessel this vessel could be of course a heat exchanger such as in my plant and uh, we have a rupture this year and the, the rupture disc uh, fluids uh, you know is discharged to the header or atmosphere from this from the uh, first flange to the uh, atmosphere to the outlet point is 15 feet and of course uh, the opposite, the rupture dispersed pressure is 100 psi, and the maximum allowable working pressure for this vessel is 100 psi gauge. Then we went through uh, seven steps to calculate the the, uh, the capacity of these rupture discs. At first, we in first step 
we determine the required informations we uh, in order to calculate the uh, in fact uh, the capacity we need the relieving pressure relieving temperature relieving compressibility molecular weight back pressure and after acquiring all of these informations we went uh, we created a table e1 like this one and calculated the total uh, resistance factor for this whole system we said that for instance uh, we divided to different sections here we defined a cofactor for the rounded entrance for the rupture this for this uh, distance and for the sudden expansions and calculated all of these cofactors and uh, summed them up here and for the distance we use this uh, equation we learned during the university and after calculation of cofactor uh, your resistance factor we uh, were supposed to determine voice sonic and dp sonic to p1 we can use uh, the chart here at the at the uh, at the last page of this chapter this annex like this one or we can use the equation here provided for different cofactors since our cofactor is between 1.2 to 10 this equation is used for dp sonic to p1 uh, ratio and this equation is used uh, for a voice sonic ratio and of course we put uh, we substitute cofactor of uh, about 4.04 into this equation and this equation and calculated the dp sonic here and voice sonic here then in first step we compared the dp sonic to dp actual we calculated dp actual by subtracting the atmospheric pressure from the relieving pressure uh, and it, the, this ratio uh, was accomplished was achieved and since the dp sonic uh, ratio is less than the dp actual ratio uh, we are in a sonic or critical conditions and we step we skip to the six uh, step six then we used from uh, this equation from the crane we need dp we need uh, the uh, volume of the vessel we need cofactor resistance factor diameter and of course why subsonic why the uh, subsonic why uh, sonic why and of course we have calculated all of this in previous steps and we calculated the volume of the vessel based on the gas law ideal gas law this is simple we substitute all of this into this equation and simply calculated the uh, capacity based on this equation on the crane so this is the end of our episodes i hope that you have enjoyed every moment of this episodes and you will be able to use this procedure for the sizing of the rupture disc uh, of course you have to review again this uh, chapter uh, you can go to my website and uh, you know uh, download the pdf that i have uh, uploaded uh, and uh, review all of these uh, you know material that were instructed uh, during these episodes and improve your knowledge about the design of rupture discs so i wish you good days and enjoy your life